Hi, my name is Alicia, and today you're gonna sit along with me as I test this vintage toy box behind me for lead. I got it from the thrift store for my son's room, and then I became concerned that it might contain lead because it's clearly from before 1978 when lead paint was banned. So I don't wanna put it in my son's bedroom if it does contain lead paint. A little bit about the toy box. I picked it up from a local thrift store for about 12 bucks because it was just the cutest thing ever, and I thought it would go perfectly in my two-year-old's bedroom. It does look homemade by maybe a grandpa or a dad for his son, which in my opinion makes it more special, but it also ups the chances of it being lead paint because you never know what kind of paint people have laying around in their garages or sheds that they might have decided to use up on a project here or there. Here's the kit we'll be using. You can find lead tester kits at pretty much any local hardware store, unlike asbestos, which you have to call in a professional to do. So we picked out this one. It's made by 3M and it was about nine or 10 bucks, again from Home Depot. And it comes with two tests and they had two options there. The other one was closer to $30 and it came with six tests. Oh, there's what it looks like inside. It's got a couple of vials, so it's gonna mix that liquid with that um, powder once you break it. So again, I'll be testing the blue and the white paint and I'll zoom in and get a close up of when I do it. So we're crushing these two parts of the barrel. I don't think you can see that, it's kind of washed out. Okay, we're gonna, there's crush A and crush B and we're crushing these two parts of the barrel together. That's kind of hard to press. Okay, here we go. Ugh. Did I break it? I don't even know if I got both pieces. Okay, there we go. All right, I don't think we have to shake it like a glow stick. That's what these remind me of, those glow sticks on Halloween. You break the glass inside. All right, so now let the liquid saturate the tip. Okay, I guess we do shake it. Shake and squeeze with the tip facing down until the yellow t liquid comes to the tip of the swab. Okay, 30 seconds. Looks pretty good so far, so good. So, so far, so good. It's not turning red or pink, um, but it has kind of gotten dirty. Let's see if it'll focus on it. There it goes. It's gotten dirty on the end, and it's also left some discoloration here. So I read somewhere that you can get two tests out of these, out of each applicator. But I'm just gonna start a fresh one just to be on the safe side. So same thing, crush each point. And then while you're squeezing, shake it. Okay, it's already got it, getting the uh, yellow liquid out. Ugh, it does look like a dirty cigarette filter. All right, so now we're gonna test the white paint. I feel like Callie Duquesne from CSI Miami. Is there blood in this? I'm gonna try and get a little bit more liquid out. Okay. So we're supposed to rub for 30 seconds. It's just turning yellow. Okay, it hasn't been 30 seconds, but I feel like it would be changing color if it had lead already. All right, good news, neither of them turned pink or red, so it looks like we are lead free, so that's a big relief. Now I just need to figure out how we're gonna refinish that, and especially how I'm going to preserve those cardboard wall hangings, those super cool retro cardboard wall hangings that are adhered to the front. Just a couple of words about the product. It did discolor the piece a little bit, so that's something to keep in mind. And it does look like this orange liquid's kind of getting on my hands, so that's a little bit messy. But overall, I think the nine or 10 bucks was worth it for a little bit of peace of mind.